I don't know how many of you guys saw, that was an incredible worship time. You know, let, let's thank our worship team again, you know, just for just the time, um, sacrifice, and leading us into God's presence week after week, day after day. But as we were worshiping, I don't know how many of you guys saw this, there was a hummingbird. You guys saw that? I, okay, all the prophetic people, I know you guys all looked out the window. <laughs> There was a hummingbird coming back and forth and back. I've never even seen a hummingbird in this, in this uh, house before. But um, I just want to share a really quick story. You know, back in 2010, uh, the Lord gave us a vision of, of doing ministry and starting houses of prayer on college campuses. And so we gathered together. I think it was a, it was a, a house in, in Newport Beach by the beach. And, um, and we had like 10 house of prayer leaders that were in college, that had a heart to start prayer on their campus. This is when nothing much was going on on college campuses spiritually at that time. And right when we came in to, uh, to gather together, all of a sudden someone left the door open for like a couple split, couple seconds and then a hummingbird came in. Oh. And the hummingbird was just like flying all over the house. And, then, wow. and we were just like, we were like, get that bird out of here. <laughs> Everyone was scared. <laughs> But then, you know, it just, it just became very peaceful and it's just kind of like hovering over, you know, one area. And the Lord spoke to us and says, you know, don't, don't like let, let the hummingbird go. Like, you know, I'm speaking to you through the hummingbird. And I, I remember we've gone back to this several times since 2010, but we looked at what, what a hummingbird means. And it means three things. It means to be tireless in pursuit. It means that all things are possible, and it means unspeakable joy. And so we were like, we received that all. And that's actually how, um, you know, that's how Movement 133 started. You know, it was in that room, and those 10 leaders in that room let, you know, they, they were one, they pioneered 10 houses of prayer. Some of them, you know, were praying four or five, six hours a day on their campus, UCLA, USC, different places. And, um, and they were, and, and you know, there was a strength, there was a tirelessness, you know, that, that God imparted to them. And then there was, uh, and, and I feel like part of the DNA of what God is doing even on the campuses right now is, jo is joy. You know, I don't know if you guys saw what happened with Asbury, uh, but there is just an explosion of joy going on right now in the campuses of America. Is the joy uh, it, the presence of God is the joy of knowing that God is moving and saving people. You know, there's just, it, it's just, it's really incredible. And then it's even, I think Sharon just prayed this, you know, that um, the, the understanding that with, all, with God, all things are possible and that there was a faith. And that was really, that was the delivery room, you know, for this college um, movement. Uh, for some of you that haven't been at the church that long, from 2010 to 2019, um, we, we started 35 houses of prayer all over America, you know, here in, in the West Coast, on the East Coast. And so actually during those nine years, we were traveling a ton, you know, going to campuses like every, sometimes every week, sometimes once a month, um, going, you know, Midwest, East Coast. Um, and so, um, but, but in, at the end of 2019, interestingly, like we passed the baton to the campus uh, ministry to the circuit riders, you know, who are really great friends of ours. And so they kind of took it and they've been, you know, God has been using them in powerful, powerful ways. And so, um, but all that to say, um, you know, when I saw that hummingbird, I felt like this is, whenever I see a hummingbird, I think of pioneering. That's what I, that's what I, I, I feel like God is strengthening us. He's getting us ready for battle. He's, he's, uh, giving us that prayer and understanding and that faith that with God, all things are possible. Yeah. And then the only way to navigate it is with joy. You know, if we don't have joy, we're going to give up. If we don't have the joy of the Lord, we're not going to make it. We're not going to be able to plant what God is doing. And so I feel like, you know, when I saw that, that hummingbird today, I felt like there is something that God is pioneering now. I don't know. I think some of you guys, um, you know, there's an expectancy. We are walking into a new season with this new building. Um, it's not just a, a corporate thing, but I believe it, even every individual here, there is something of the new that God is bringing us into. 
And I, and I, I, I believe there is, there is one more shift. And I believe for some of us, it could be a seismic shift. There is one more shift that God wants to do. Um, it can be physically, it can be with work, but I believe a lot of it has to do with our heart and a lot of it has to do with our perspective. Uh, but there is a, there's a shift coming and we're not going to get into that building until we all shift together with the Lord. Yeah. And I, I, that's, where, that's what I, I believe God is, is saying today, that we have got to shift with God. It can be very expected. It can take us, some of us, maybe we've been on a journey for 15, 20 years getting ready for something. And maybe in this shift, we're going to just turn right here. And, and, and God will use this somehow, but we're going to shift another way. And so this is, it's all a part of getting ourselves aligned with what God is about, of what God wants to do through our lives. You know, I, I love it that we have young people that are in high school. Some have just graduated. Some are even younger. That, you know, there's, there's a whole life ahead of us, you know, and, and so many of us, we've been doing work. We've been seasoned in ministry. We've, we're doing, but... There is something that God is going to do. None of us are fully in our calling yet. How many of you guys know that? How many of you guys feel that? We are not, we have not yet experienced what God has for us in our life when we walk into our destiny. And, and there's a reason for that is because we need to shift and align with him before we get in. And so if you'll turn in your Bibles today, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I just want to start here. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. I believe God wants to kind of paint a, a broader picture and then, and then uh, just really help us to see where His heart is for His people right now. 1 Corinthians 3.10. It says, According to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building on it. So this is Paul speaking. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. No, for no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has to be the foundation of what we are doing. Of everything that we're doing, of this new season, Jesus Christ has to be the foundation. And the verse 12 says, Now if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it, because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. And so this is 1 Corinthians 3 is talking to believers. It's, I, I believe it's even talking to seasoned believers, believers that are doing ministry, believers that are in the workplace, that are saved, that are trying to you know, be the light of Jesus where they are. And Paul stops them. You know, he talks to the, the church at Corinth and he says, wait a second, we need to all refocus right now. We need to all be sure what we're doing is, supposed, is what we're supposed to be doing and the intention of our heart is correct. And, and, where, and what we are building is really of the kingdom and not of ourselves. How many of you guys know it is very easy for us to be a Christian and kingdom, but to build things that are not kingdom. I'm a pastor. I know that. I, I've done, I, I've built many things that were of the flesh, you know, 50, 60, 70% in the flesh, but still in the context of church and kingdom. You, as some of you guys know, I'm just trying to be honest right now, but, but it's, uh, but what God is doing now is he says, every Thing that we do, the foundation has to be Jesus Christ. It has to be his kingdom. It has to be his, his word going forth. It has to be his presence touching the lives of people around us. If that is not our focus, it is, then you know, it goes on to say that you know, every man builds with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. And at the end of the day, everything is going to be tested. 
Every single thing is going to be tested. How many of you guys here want to build something that is eternal? How many of you guys want to build something that has rewards on earth? Let's be honest. A few of you. Okay, yeah, okay, yes. Let's be honest. I, I, I believe in aid in us is we want to do things that are great. We want to touch the world. We want to impact the world. There's nothing wrong with trying to impact the world. But when we try to impact the world and lose sight of the foundation of being kingdom and Jesus Christ at the center, then all of a sudden we lose our reward. The Bible says that, you know, this is so nice. It says, you know, if we build and the fire burns it, um, then he will suffer loss. He won't get his reward, but yet he himself will be saved. <laughs> the Bible says you won't lose your salvation if you do that. You know, you, you build something that is, that may be personal ambition, personal dreams, personal vision. Um, at the end of the day, the Bible says that you may be able to build something great, but you're not going to get any eternal reward. But Jesus is nice. He says, but you will still get saved. You'll still get to heaven. <laughs> but, you're not gonna, but your life would have been building with hay and straw and, and everything that burns. And I believe today, you know, I'm, lo- I'm looking at, a, at, a, at some generals here today. And I believe some of you are young and you guys are growing into it. But I, I believe none of us here want to build on earth whether it's through work, through ministry, through music, through the creative, through whatever it is that God's put in, in, on your heart. None of us want to build something that's not going to carry any weight in heaven right. in the years ahead. We want to build it so that Jesus Christ is at the center. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I believe this is, this is what God is after right now. And this is why there is a Uh, I don't know how to word it, but there is a testing that is going on right now. A testing and a purging. And and, and there is an exposure that's going on. I don't know how many of you guys know, but but with people that are doing big ministry things, people that are in business, that are not ethical. You know, God is dealing from the bottom up. He's dealing with it all. And this is the grace of God. I I just want to say, like if God doesn't deal and confront us and give us a chance to change then, you know, then we're going to miss out on everything. But if God is confronting us and he's challenging us and he's correcting us and he's giving us a chance to go from this direction to that direction, this is called the mercy of God. And sometimes it doesn't feel good. The mercy of God sometimes comes with some um, humility and, 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 and some brokenness and some repentance but he gives us a chance because this is what he's doing right now is he wants people to enter into this next season on a good foundation. You know, I, I mean, I, I, we've been talking about it and, and I think it's raining again. I just got to, you know, it, it's the rain doesn't stop, right? It's, <laughs> it's revival. You know, we all, we all talked about, but there's been two things, you know, it's in the natural, it's been the rain, it's been the snow, it's been the cleansing, the, the revival. And then the second thing that I've been seeing all over the city is I've been seeing trees toppled over. Yeah. It, and, and roots. How, how many of you guys have seen a few trees toppled over? Yeah. Like, how many of you seen, like, a lot of trees toppled <laughs> over? Like, I, I mean, I think in the valley here, especially, I don't know where you guys live, but we had a big tree toppled on our street, another big tree toppled on the street next to us. I went to a park where we play tennis a lot. There was, there was six, probably the six biggest trees in the park were all, were all, were all down. I was like, what in the world is going on in here? It, one almost hit the tennis court. And I was like, it just missed. It fell right next to the tennis court. And, and I was like, what, what is God doing? God is going to the root. God is, you know, we're... You know, I think it's uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7, right? Um, when when uh, Samuel was looking and, and trying to find the next king of Israel to anoint him, and he saw David's brothers come before, and he was like, God, he, and, and the Lord spoke to him. He says, the Lord doesn't look at height. He doesn't look at the appearance of a man. He doesn't look at stature, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so it's the same thing. You know, some of these trees, they look so big and so mighty. But their roots aren't, they're, they're not strong. 
And so when the winds come and the rains come, they topple over. And, and right now, God is wanting to build trees. You know, he's wanting to build trees through you. He's trying to build things of influence through you, whose roots go deep, who won't topple. You know, there's a song, you know, I think it's, for, it's like my son's favorite song, Firm Foundation. You know, tr- winds blow, tr- I don't even know how it goes. But, um, yeah, yeah, you want to sing it? No. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anyhow, anyhow, but anyhow, the winds blow, the rains come, and, and, and we're not going to be moved. Because this is what God is doing. I, I want us today, you know, even as we're getting into the Word, to just take inventory of and, and really focus on what is it that we're doing and, and what is it that may not be 100% founded on, on Jesus Christ. I, I believe these are the things in God's love and in God's jealousy for what is birthing through you. He wants everything to be lined up correctly. He wants you to do it for the reward, the eternal reward that he wants to, that he wants you to walk into. And, uh, and so today, this might be our last message here, but before we walk and step into the build, new building, we want the foundation to be right. And, um, you know, one more quick story. Um, you know, it was for nine years, the last nine years, we've had a summer program called Launch, um, Launch Discipleship School. It, we, did, we haven't had one since 2020, but we had nine prior to 2020. And one of the very first years, I can't even remember if it was 2012, 2013, or, or what, um, it was the first day of launch. We had like 35 students. We were all excited. I was going to go early, like two hours to pray and, you know, and, and get ready for launch. And I was driving up Los Feliz. And all of a sudden, um, it was like the traffic just stopped. Like no one was moving. And, then, and we were literally stuck on Los Feliz for one hour, you know. And so we're like, what is going on? But what happened was there was a huge tree off of Los Feliz, right by Griffith Park, that had f- completely fallen over. And, and then these huge, this whole big root system was laying right on the side of the road. And, uh, and when I was driving in uh, for that first day of launch, the Lord kept speaking to me, this school is about the root system. It's about the healing. You know, it's about deliverance. It's about getting people set free. And in order for us to really walk into what God has called us to, we have to become healthy. You know, we have to... We can't be offended. We have to release forgiveness. We need to deal with trauma. We need to deal with strongholds of the enemy. We need to deal with those little rabbit trails that the enemy comes in again and again and again, you know, to tempt us and cause us to fall. And so, you know, from day one of when launch started, we, we were like, we, God is in the business of dealing with our roots. And uh, if I could just give you a little advertisement, uh, <laughs> This coming summer, we're relaunching, we're restarting launch. Um, it's going to be, yeah, we're, we're super duper excited. Um, let me see. It's going to be June the 19th. It's going to start and it's going to go till July 16th. We did it for six weeks before. Now we've cut it to four because six weeks was intense. <laughs> and, uh, and it also took everybody's summer. This one's only going to take a month of your summer. Um, but it is, it's been life-changing. We've graduated almost 300 people from launch, you know, over the last nine years. And some of them are doing major ministry. Um, some of them are doing incredible things in the marketplace, in arts and entertainment, in music. Some of them are winning Grammys. Some of them, I mean, it's, it's just, it, it literally has been a launch into their destiny. Yeah. So I want to encourage you, if you guys are serious about really getting our roots healed, whole, um, you know, and just having an amazing time with, with a company of people that love Jesus and, uh, and want to walk out their calling. Um, June 19th to July 16th. And, uh, oh yeah, and it's also, we've also uh, made this uh, one month discipleship a prerequisite to go to Thailand, Nepal, Philippines. We're going to go to Philippines. place. Um, because before launch, we took people on missions 
Um, and some of them, because of the intensity of what we go through, uh, some of them got really hit bad. There was a lot of backlash. And some of them, actually, there's been a good handful of people that have really, that have even walked away from the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, and so we were like, we have got to get people prepared, mind, soul, body, spirit, to, to be ready to, to go on missions, to do, to do these things, um, to ad advance the kingdom in the darkest places on the earth. And so um, Andrew Hugo is going to have a video. Um, I don't know when, but he's going to come out. He's going to be doing a pro. What's that? Yeah, next month. Next month. All right. <laughs> so we're going to, we're getting ready. You know, those of you guys that, that are interested or know friends, um, this is a big emphasis is preparing arts and entertainment people just because of the incredible pressure um, that comes from people that are coming into this industry. Um, we want to make sure that they're, foundation is right and strong so um so yeah if we could turn um mark chapter 10 verse 28 and we're going to camp out here um you know for for a little bit mark chapter 10 Verse 28, and I, and I believe this is, this is the, the verse for us right now um, in this time of just really preparing to step into what is next. It's, uh, it's, it's something that, the, that Jesus challenged his disciples with. Um, it says, verse 28, Peter began to say to Jesus, Behold, we have left everything and followed you. And then verse 29, Jesus responds to him. And he says, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or farms for my sake and for the, for the gospel's sake, but that he will receive a hundred times as much now in the present age, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and farms, along with persecutions. How many of you guys like that? And in, and in the age to come, <laughs> eternal life. I, you know, when I, when I was praying about today, this, because um, I, I kind of felt like, you know, this might be our last, you know, home gathering until we, we walk in and the, and the Lord kind of dropped this into my spirit. I don't know what life is going to look like, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten months from now for all of us, but there is something foundational that God wants to put deep in our spirit, man. And, and, it's, it, and you know, Jesus responds to his disciples. You know, Peter, you know, these disciples, they gave up a lot to follow Jesus, right? They left everything. They left their occupation. They left their homes. You know, they were radical. They are, they are like um, examples and models to the church of what it means to give up everything to, to you know, to, and, and to lower their nets and to follow Jesus and become fishers of men. And so, but Jesus, you know, he responds to, to Peter and he goes, yeah, you guys have, you guys have followed me. You guys have given up three years of your life, but I, but, but I want to tell you guys something. And I believe this is something that the Lord wants to instruct us there. I, that's why I think in this group, there are people that have Lay down everything to follow Jesus. Some of you guys, you know, God is using in incredible ways. You know, um, you know, wherever you are, and, and God has placed vision in your heart. And, um, but here Jesus says, he says, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left home, brothers, sister, mother, father, children, or farms for my sake and for the gospel's sake but that he will receive a hundred times as much now in the present age. And so I just want to say something that how many of you guys want to see a hundredfold return in your life? This is not like two to twofold, a hundred percent, two hundred percent. This is a one hundredfold return. And, and the Bible says it, and it's, this probably shocked a lot of the people that heard this. They were like, Unless you leave home, you know, that's kind of like your comfort. You know, that's kind of like your, your peace, your, your, your sustenance. Unless you leave, lose, leave 
brother and sister, which is your contemporaries, your, you know, your, fellow, you know, your fellow folks, you know, your, your peers, unless you leave father or mother, and unless you leave, leave farms, which is really like your sustenance, your what, you know, what's creating wealth, money, um, that for my sake and for the gospel's sake, this is what's required. It's like, it's like some of the things that are the most important to you, you're going to have to learn how to leave it all at the altar so that I can give you something even better. That's what Jesus was saying. Because you guys have had a measure of sacrifice. We honor that. We love it. Thank you for following me. Um, you know, you guys are radical followers of Jesus, uh, of me. But, but in order for you to get to the next level, you guys need to understand that even these things that you have, you got to, the, the most the things that are most precious, you know, in the context of, you know, of the culture, family was the most important. You know, their occupation was the most, their farms were the most, their houses were the most important. He was those, unless you're able to give all of this stu stuff up, and, and, and for my sake and for the gospel's sake, you're not going to get to the hundredfold. How many of you guys are a little scared to hear about that? <laughs> there, we need to be willing to be able to lay everything down. And, and what Jesus after, he says, you got to do things for my sake and for the gospel's sake. And I just want to stop here for a moment. You know, us, you know, that have been believers for a while, some of us, you know, mature, really mature. I believe this is a, it's an incredible community. But I, I just want to, I just want to ask a question. You know, what we are doing right now with our lives, our careers, wherever that might be, the vision that, you know, we're carrying in our hearts and, and day by day trying to make steps to, to see it to come into full fruition. Um, how much of that, how much percent of that are we doing for the sake of Jesus? I just want to, th to think about that. How much of this are we doing for it's like this whole this project that I on, that I am on it is it is for you Lord it is for your kingdom it is for people to know you it is for the for the going forth of the gospel I just want to be truthful and I, and we don't we're not asking for answers today but I'm but I believe God is 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 he wants to bring that question to us like what is what of what we are carrying is hay and straw and stubble that can be burned. This can be what we're in, or it can be our heart's motivation towards it, or it can be our, you know, it can be our, you know, our drive, our, our push, and, and our strength. You know, how much of this is yielded to the Lord, unto the Lord, for the kingdom of the Lord? That is, I believe everything that we do needs to be tested um, in this day. I just want to share a, a, just a kind of a story like in 2006. Some of you guys know this, but, um, you know, I, I love food. And I think if you're at this food, every, who loves food here? <laughs> how many of you really love food? Uh, yes, sir. And how many really, really, really love food? <laughs> Okay, yeah, Neri Neri West got two hands up. Okay, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a prerequisite to be in this community. If you don't love food, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is the place for you. No, it's okay. <laughs> but um, I, I, we love food. We, when we travel, we used to travel a lot, you know. We, we don't travel as much now because God has just hunkered down, you know, in Hollywood and just what God's doing in this new season. But we go on vacations and we go, where's the best food at? <laughs> we find out the cities. It doesn't matter where it is. If it's in Europe, if it's in Asia, we're like, we are going after the food. Okay? <laughs> That's how I live uh, and still do kind of. But, um, but it's, uh, I mean, I, I began to get convicted that this is, it's kind of, <laughs> let, let me finish the story. Okay? <laughs> um, so, but in 2006, um, I, 
a, a friend gave me a book because I mean she 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 kind of saw how I was eating. I would eat everything, <laughs> you know. And the name of the book was The Maker's Diet. How many of you guys ever heard of that book? Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's a dangerous book. But um, I I won't I, I'll, I'll spare you guys the details because I don't want I don't want the Lord to convict you today. <laughs> <laughs> But anyhow, um, I read the book, uh, basically the premise. Uh, can I share? Is it okay? Yeah. No one's going to feel offended, right? Okay, okay. And there's no, yeah, yeah. It's not, we're not, we're not imposing anything on you. Everyone get, has a choice. But, um, but it, this story was basically about a young man. I mean, not a young man. He was like probably in his 30s and 40s. He, um, when, I, when I saw the picture of him um, in the book, he looked like he was, he'd just come back from a concentration camp. He was like 90 pounds, skin and bones, and uh, he had a disease that no one could figure out what was wrong with him. So he went to every doctor, every nutritionist. They all tried to help him. They gave him medicine, shots, you know, kept him in the hospital, and nothing worked. He was, it was years. And, uh, and the last doctor that he saw, um, he basically told him, he says, you know what? We don't know what's wrong with you. There's nothing that I can do. Um, but I can tell you this, you probably have about six months to live because um, you're, you're, you're about to die. You can't even keep anything down. So a um, couple of months after that um, diagnosis, he met a old Jewish man. And the old Jewish man said to him, he says, hey, man, have you ever tried just following the Bible, the diet of the Bible? And he was like, no, I haven't, but I'll try anything, you know. So he... Um, he studied the Bible and what, and what um, the Bible said about dieting, you know. And he, for a couple months, changed his entire diet to align with the Bible. And then he did, he did a study. And he, he realized that um, pre-World War II in Israel, that none, you know, they, the, the Jews were very, you know, intentional about their diet. You know, they, and many of them still are. And, uh, and so pre-World War II, when, when every Jew was keeping the biblical diet, there were zero instances of cancer, zero instances of heart disease. And then also there, there have been times when like, there was like a bubonic plague where six, I can't remember, 60 to 70 percent of all the neighboring nations around Israel, 60 to 70 percent of their population died. And not one person in Israel caught the plague. And, uh, and the Lord began to speak to him and said, it's because of their diet. It's they became immune to sickness, to virus, to disease. And, uh, and so post-World War II, a lot of Israel began to adopt the Western diet. And now the percentages of heart disease cancer are very similar to the Western world now. And so, um, so all that to say, you know, after I read that book, um, you know, the Lord, the Lord convicted me, you know, not just about what I was eating, <laughs> but he, he was like, you know, there are things that I want to do in your life and you need to stay healthy. Wow. And, uh, and so, and I was like, I, I took a huge step of faith, you know, we're Chinese, but there was, there, you know, to, to follow the, the biblical diet is, you know, there's a lot. There's a, it's, it's very intense and it's very detailed, but the Lord just put two things on my heart. The two main things is one to not eat pork, because God hates pork. <laughs> okay, he hates, he, he does. The, the Bible says it, okay? <laughs> Once again, no condemnation. And, uh, and, then, and then the second thing is that, so, can I, can I go a little deeper? So, so the kind of the, kind of the theology of food is that you eat what, the animals and things eat. You, you basically take in what they take in. So pigs, you know, they're like cannibals. They eat, the, they eat one another. They eat of the, you know, the junk on the ground, the waste of the ground. Let me just say that. Yeah. And so when you're eating pig, pork, you're actually not just eating the pork, but you're eating all the junk that, they, that is in their body. Yeah. That's, the, that's the theory of it. And then the other thing is, is shellfish. They do exactly the same thing that pigs do on the earth. They go and they bottom feed the, you know, they bottom feed all the waste of the, of the water. And so when you're eating 
shrimp. things like shrimp <laughs> and lobster and you know it's uh, basically the theory of, of, of dieting is you're not just eating that good tasting stuff, but you're eating everything that they're ingesting yeah. into their bodies. So I'm done with it now. Okay. <laughs> but anyhow, after reading that, the, the Lord just sp spoke to me and says, you need to be healthy. You know, I was, I think I was like 33 years old at that time and says, I want you, I, I, I need you to stay healthy. And so I cut out shellfish just like cut it out. And then I just cut out pork. And I think I had a, there was a wedding banquet. It was a Chinese wedding banquet. Like I think a, about a month later. And I went to the, to the banquet. That's usually the, the best meal, you know, that you have, you know, 10 course dinner. And I went and there was one dish that I could eat. And the other nine were all pork and shellfish. And I was like, this is going to be hard. <laughs> but, you know, for the last 17 years, you know, I haven't, you know, I haven't eaten pork. I haven't eaten shellfish. Um, I've, I've told some of you, like I, I used to get sick, you know, I used to get probably like, like everyone else, like probably a week or two of the, of the year, you'll get sick or you're just not feeling good. For the last 17 years, I haven't gotten sick one time. I, I'm just, I'm not sick. During COVID, I wasn't scared. I was, I was like, you know, even at the very beginning, I was going to Costco. I was doing, I was like, I was like, this is not going to touch my body. Like this is, this is a plague, and plagues that won't touch. If you eat well, it's not going to touch me. And so, I never got COVID. You know, it's uh, there's some people in our house that are still eating a little bit of pork and and shellfish, and, and uh, we're we're cutting it out. But, I mean, most most everyone in our house got COVID. I didn't get COVID. Like I was just I. And I was out all over the place. Um, all that to say, um, where was I going with this? And yeah, but um, yeah, so now, like even, like for me, like even when I'm at meals and like there's, there's like really good looking, you know, shellfish and seafood and stuff there, <laughs> there. I'm just, I'm reminded, I'm reminded, like God needs me healthy. Like I, I need to, I need to, this is part of, my calling is to, you know, not die at 55 years old or whatever, you know, and that I need to be healthy. And so it's like, it's like keeping that mindset of, you know, we want to be founded. Everything that we do needs to be founded on Jesus. Everything that we do needs to be for the kingdom. It says for Jesus' sake and for the sake of the gospel. And so um, I, I just want to say this, you know, as I believe there's going to be people shifting. In fact, I've already heard of some stories like in this in this in these next couple of weeks, next month, there is going to be a shifting that is going to take place in some of our lives. And we need to remember that it is, it is G, God wants it for Jesus sake and God wants it for the gospel's sake. OK, if we are able to make decisions Based on those two things, we are going to see the blessing of God. We're going to see farms. We're going to see homes. We're going to see. So what the Bible says is that we're going to have a hundred times. We're going to have a hundred times more brothers and sisters. A hundred times more mothers and fathers. A hundred times bigger farms, more blessed, more finances. If we will keep what we are pursuing in line with the kingdom and in line with sharing the gospel through our life. And so, um, yeah, I, I, even, even in some of the things that we're doing right now, I would say, you know, the projects that you're on, I believe there's a mini God projects, sports, um, educate, whatever it is that God has you on track for. Like we need to focus and say this, how do I offer what I am doing for the kingdom? And how and what does it look like? It might be I'm going to look different. I'm going to act different. I'm going to be different. But how do I keep this pure unto the kingdom and for the sake of the gospel? Many of us at, at work or, or doing our thing is not even going to be so much what we accomplish, but it's the circle of people that come around us that we influence. It could be just the five, 10 people at our desk or the five, 10 people on our team. Like these, if we can keep that front and center in where God is leading us into in these days ahead, I believe we're not just going to align ourselves with the Lord, but we're going to see the hand of God on everything that we do. 
So, um, yeah, let, let, let's bow our heads. Can someone play the cues? Is that okay? Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Leroy's got it. Okay. Father, we thank you for this privilege that we have to be living right now in history. We thank you, Lord, even specifically, Lord, for calling us into this community, God, and even this big transition, Lord, that you are bringing us through as the body of Christ and as individuals, God, in our various fields and work and projects and ministry. Father, we, we thank you for where you've brought us. We thank you for what you've taught us. We thank you for the DNA that is in our spirit. We thank you for the corrections and the exhortation, Lord, that you have given us through the years. God, that has brought us to this point. And Father, today, Lord, we ask that you would take what is in our hands and what is in our hearts and even ideas that we have in our minds. God, and we pray that you would align it Lord, that you would build it upon the foundation that is in Jesus Christ. Lord, that everything, Lord, would be intentional. Everything that we do would be purposeful for the kingdom. Lord, to be an example to the people in our lives that you brought around us. So, Father, we, we pray, Lord, that even in these coming days that you would speak to us Lord that you would show us convict us of areas of our lives that are outside of your will attitudes and thoughts that are outside of your will plans that are outside of your will God, we pray that there would be a special grace even right now. There would be an impartation to know what it is that you have called us to. That it would be so clear, unmistakable. Lord, that you would put excitement in our hearts for it. God, knowing what you want to do through our lives to express the kingdom of God. So, Father, we open our hearts to you today. We open our minds. We pray that you would, you would even go deep, Lord, in our hearts, Lord, to the, to the things that drive us, the motivation. God, we pray that you would test every part God, we invite you to, even in this day, Lord, to bring your fire, God, even the things that we, are, that we are working on right now. We just pray, Lord, that you would release that fire. We pray that you would test what is in our hands, God. And we pray that only that which is gold and silver, things that last, Lord, that they will remain and they will be the things that we pick up. And these will be the things that we steward. And these will be the, and then the people, Lord, that you have called us to walk with. God, we pray that it would be so clear and so purposeful as we walk forward. God, we pray that everything that we do in our day would be purposeful for your kingdom. God, give us that sensitivity to your spirit. Lord, as we navigate the moments of our days. Yeah, so Holy Spirit, we, we just welcome you, Lord, to 
align everything that needs to be aligned right now. God, we pray that if there are shifts that need to take place in our lives, God, we pray that you would show us, Lord, that you would open those doors that, that you want us to step in, that you would close those doors that are not for us, God, that we would not force anything. We would not try to be anywhere ahead of your time and ahead of your ways. God, only what is of you. God, we follow after you. We trust you. We say that you are our shepherd. Lord, when we follow you, there is peace. There is joy. There is faith, God, and there is also perseverance. So God, we, yeah, we put our lives into the palm of your hands. And we thank you that you are our Father. <laughs> We thank you that you are all powerful, that you are all knowing, God, and that you choose to lead us. We're so grateful. So Father, we, yeah, we just pray, Lord, whatever happens in this coming days, weeks ahead, even with the church, with the building, God, we pray that you would lead us, that you would prepare us, prepare us well. Prepare us focused for your sake and for the gospel's sake. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.